this is a video about um i guess about use of mvc and i guess it does come into our um object oriented design um and understanding how to translate a requirement into into a um into something that we actually code and knowing kind of how to you know the most appropriate ways of doing that um, um and what i've what i've what i've done is i've i've um copy um what I've done is I've, I've set up this this combination of a, a model of a controller and a, and a view. So we've got the kind of an MVC um, setup here. Um, so our our model class is just a person, and a person has two locations, and each location is a string. So location one, location two. Um, we have a controller that, um, in this case, we'll just save the details of of the of the person, and effectively that just persists it to the database. Uh, it takes an instance of the person object, persists it to the database, and then returns the edit person uh, view. And then we've got the, a view here that would essentially be our our edit view, which just shows the, the two location inputs and a submit button. So. Obviously, this is very, very minimal, and, and in reality, you'd have a lot more than this. But I think I hope it, it's going to illustrate my point. Um, so uh, the guy behind the Symphony framework, uh, Fabian Potenza, Potencia, um, does did an absolutely um, brilliant uh, tutorial on. Frameworks in general, why you know why a why why use a framework? What's the purpose of a framework? And there's, there's a danger that um, if we just use frameworks like uh, like Symphony or or, or like um, you know ASP.NET MVC or things like that, we just use them and we just we just we think that's we think that's programming and actually. We don't need that framework to program. The, the, the framework is there to solve. Is is there to uh, make repetitive tasks and projects that follow a particular pattern easier to implement by uh, modularizing things, encapsulating things, making things that we do often um, uh, easier to implement making our code more reusable. Um, but ultimately, if we don't use that framework properly, and if we don't use the pattern properly, then you kind of might say we may as well not use it. And so one of the examples here is um, uh, we had a, a, a requirement, a request, to say that we wanted the user to be able to uh, set a property on the person to say that uh, location two should essentially just be a copy of location one. Um, this is just, this is slightly it's, I've, I've renamed this from from the actual specific thing to make it just slightly more generic. But essentially, you've got two fields. And the user is going to select and say, "Actually, I want I want both these fields to be to be the same value." Um, and so the requirement, as described, was to put a checkbox uh, on the on the form to essentially copy the data from one field to the other. Uh, but this was something that needed to be be persistent. So we should remember we should remember the fact that they, this these two fields are to be kept in sync. So when we then come to, to, to do that, the, the first part of it is quite easy. You know, we've got, we have our view here and we put a checkbox on there. Uh, but then we need to, we need to do something with that. We need to do something with that 
with the value of that checkbox. So if someone ticks that box, what does that mean? Um, and I guess we've got multiple we've got multiple options here. We could either see it as just something that applies to this form, in which case, you know, we might add a little bit of JavaScript, you know, up here to say, you know, we'll add a, 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 a jQuery, to this, you know, have a lot of kind of function that says, you know, copy, uh, So location two equals location one. And for argument's sake, and then we'll just you know, something like a you know you know the jQuery thing. You know dot on on change equals on changes it. But you know if if that's actually be on 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 location one, location one. Dot on change um, and then do some, you know, if you know, dot check then location two dot value location one dot value or something, you know, you do some something. Something along the lines of of, of that, uh, you know. So now you've got the idea that you know if that's if that value is checked, then when we change location one, location two is going to update, and that's just satisfied our our, our initial requirement. That's it. It's done. Um, or at least it's, it's done in terms of kind of getting that to change. The fact that we want that to persist means we need a value here that we're going to that we're going to store um, but again so now we've got we've got a copy of we've, we've got that value um, for this checkbox stored as part of our as part of our model we've got something which changes the the display if location one is updated you think well is there is there anything else to do we then had a, a challenge whereby these values, this location one, location two, actually get updated elsewhere as well. There's another. Um, how much I should have I should have done it. Actually. There's another. There was another. Let me just do that. Control. Let's call that activity control. Um, and that also that also um, allows you to edit details about the person. In this case, specifically, it allows you to edit um, location one. So we've got a view. Let's move that down. Let's give that another. Uh, but this this one is a little bit different in that this only has a copy of location one. It only has a copy of location one. You submit that. So now we have a, a, a slightly a slightly curious situation whereby um, if we leave it like that, then on the patient screen, we've checked something to say, actually, the two values, location two should be kept in sync with location one. And we're storing it, and that's being preserved. And if we edit the thing on this screen, excuse me, those two values will be saved. But if we then do something here, then that value, you know, location two won't get updated. So now we've got an option. Now we've got a choice of well, actually, how? So how do we kind of make that? How do we make it work so that 
if we want this logic to to actually kind of persist throughout work, you know all of the, all of our interactions with 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 the, with the person on this how can we make that how can we make that work and There are there are two ways of doing that. You know, we can we can either go into here and we can say, well, if um, person dot copy block one, let's just say for moment equals true, then a person dot location two equals person location one do that um but if we do that then we've now got to copy that same code and put it in the activity controller and again that doesn't feel yeah we do that but we it kind of feels like a we're not what's the what's the point you know what's the point in our model existing to start off, why does we, we, that class even exist? Um, but also, we've just repeated a block of code, which just you know, there is a you know, our, our dry our dry principle of don't repeat yourself um, seems seems like it's kind of being being broken here because we're repeating that code. So you can say, well, okay, well, let's why don't we move that to there? Let's put that in here and have a function, function, update, lock two. And we can say if this is this. So we just set update lock two and we can do that. We can say, right, well, there you go. Now we've now we've just made it so that yeah, our code we're kind of repeating. We've now kind of got our code kind of defined in one place and we're still calling it kind of twice. We're still doing this same thing of persisting and we're having to kind of call this. And so person controller needs to know, needs to know about this thing. Needs to know about the inner workings of the person object. It needs to know that there's a possibility that, that we need to check this. And that seems seems a little bit strange. Seems a bit strange that the, the, the controller, A, we're having to, so if we had another controller, if we had another controller and it's going to, has the ability to modify a person object, we need to know that, well, if it was modifying location values, it needs to know to call that. And if it's not modifying location values, it kind of needs to know that it doesn't need to call. There's quite a lot of kind of implied uh, knowledge there. It just seems a little bit sort of strange. So you think, well, actually, why don't we, you know, have our um, you know, if I, I, I set method for set location one. Say, for example, when you set that, you know, if you just do that, that was your setter for, for location one. then you know you don't need this anymore that's kind of redundant yeah that's redundant we're just saying that you know when that value is set you know it just magically happens and now that that logic about sort of setting about the relationship between location one and location two based on this other value is now encapsulated within our model our controllers don't need to know about it. The view knows about it there from a, but that's, that's purely from a 
an aesthetic perspective. You could get rid of, you could still, if you wanted to, you could now comment that out. And you know that the integrity of the data, uh, you know, the uh, integrity of our data is still going to be uh, right on the server. Though, actually, just one last thing. You would also want to have a setter for location two that says So we only set location if, so any calls to that will only kind of succeed if that value is not true. Um, so now having kind of, you, know, you can get rid of that JavaScript, that will still, it won't look nice from a user perspective because they'll update like if that box is checked and they update like location one, location two will still have whatever value it has. For. It's only when you save that you would then uh, these values will get updated. So you know you still keep the JavaScript purely from a um, making the making the display look nice and making the system kind of nice and kind of usable, kind of fluffy for the user. Um, but the key thing is to get that logic into the model. And if the logic is in the model, then you know, we keep our controllers nice and nice and thin, which is what we like. We like thin controllers. Um, our views do exactly what they're supposed to do. They just display stuff and make displays work nicely. And our models pick up the heavy lifting. That's that's where we want to get to. And that then that that for me, a we using MVC. Correct. We have model. We have models that have, that contain our, our business logic. We have thin controllers. We've satisfied our dry principle of not repeating ourselves. Um, and we've shown good object to into design. And, and I, f I feel like that's this would then make this code then kind of more, you know, sustainable. You know, someone coming and reading this would know what was going on. They'd know, you know, when you look at the classes, you can see what they're doing. It's it's kind of it's clearer what the classes are actually doing. Um, and that kind of process of going through and, and thinking about where where the code goes and what the implications are of putting the code in different places um, should be followed through for every decision that we take. And obviously that's, that's difficult when you're working with legacy code. It's also difficult when we've got model classes that are being automatically generated. Um, this is why I think, and this is why I think it's so important that we own, that you can own and manage those, those, those model files, those model classes. So in the case of the entity framework, it's going down the code first approach. That's it.